coming up on the show, we share the secret behind Maruti Suzuki's fuel-efficient success story. Also, all the off-roading fun in the desert with the Mahindra SUVs. And all the action from the Red Bull show run in Hyderabad. Hello and welcome to CNB Bazaar Buzz. Now needless to say, fuel efficiency is considered top priority not just amongst auto consumers across India but also auto manufacturers be it two-wheelers or four-wheelers. And one company that has managed to deliver fairly fuel efficient products across its portfolio is Maruti Suzuki. Now this is the new facelifted Desire sedan which boasts not only of exterior and interior changes but also huge improvement in its diesel and petrol engines fuel efficiency. But how does Maruti Suzuki really achieve these numbers and what's the secret behind their success? NDTV's auto editor Siddharth Vinayak Patankar visited the facility of Maruti Suzuki at Manisar to give you these answers. So the PTRA Green Award goes to Hero Motor Corp and Maruti Suzuki. Hero Motor Corp and Maruti Suzuki. India's largest car maker bagging the prestigious Green Award at the 2015 NDTV Car and Bike Awards in January this year. The award was given to recognize Maruti's efforts in increasing the fuel efficiency of its range of cars without increasing emissions or prices. Please keep that fuel efficiency going now. So to get you an insight as to how Maruti has been able to really achieve this with such great levels of success, we thought we should bring you where it all happens and so we are inside the Manisar plant for Maruti. In fact, uh, it's a cluster of plants here and so we're going to go into what's plant A. But before that, let me introduce you to the uh, Executive Officer of Engineering for Maruti Suzuki, Mr. C.V. Raman. Good to see you. Hi, Siddharth. Nice to see you again. Very nice to be with you here at the plant as yeah. well, uh, Raman San. So yeah. thank you for uh, letting us in. It's our pleasure. We have two of the latest iterations of uh, what, what you produce here, yeah. which is the uh, facelifted desire in petrol and diesel. Yeah. Uh, it's almost apt because now this is the latest product where you have talked about increasing fuel efficiency Absolutely. with the existing platform, with the existing engine. So yeah. um, the first overview is what was the, uh, the driving factor for Maruti to do this across different models? Maruti has always been very uh, focused on uh, providing value to the customer. We always uh, maintained a very good acquisition price uh, for the customer so that uh, we, we've started uh, doing very good designs of our products and our uh, volume today suggests that uh, yes, it is widely accepted. And third, of course, uh, we are very, very keyed on uh, the uh, cost of operation and cost of maintenance of our vehicles. So that overall, after the customer buys a vehicle, he gets a good uh, uh, you know, uh, running cost uh, when he buys the vehicle, when he buys Maruti products. So uh, with that in mind, uh, we've always been a top runner. Uh, we always uh, wanted to be a top runner in our fuel efficiency uh, uh, in our vehicles and provide low cost of uh, maintenance. So with that, uh, we've, uh, uh, th we have an improvement program as part of our corporate philosophy that we need to improve fuel efficiency of our vehicles and provide better value to the customer. Existing customers. fleet as well. Existing yeah. fleet as well and of course, uh, create benchmarks when we are uh, bringing in new products. Mm. Here's a closer look at what Maruti has been able to achieve. The updated Alto 800 saw mileage climb from 19.7 to 22.74 kilometers per liter of petrol. The K10 variant that arrived in 2014 had a 15% increase in mileage to 24.07 kilometers per liter. The facelifted Swift petrol had a jump to 20.4 while the diesel went to an impressive 25.2 km per litre. The recently introduced Swift Desire facelift also got a shot in the arm with the diesel boasting a superb 26.59 km per litre and the petrol 20.85. This has allowed Maruti to claim segment best figures for mileage for three of those models and even the Siaz which came in 2014 bests its class. This is creditable and of course it's also great from the environment, uh, environment point of view. Yeah. 
Should we go inside the plant? Sure. You're going sure. to talk yeah. us through all the changes that have yeah, been definitely. implemented. Let's do that. Great. All right, so we've got the VVT here, and uh, you have, of course, enhanced efficiency on petrol and diesel. So, on this particular block, what are, what are the changes? Uh, we are always, uh, our endeavor is to improve the thermal, thermal efficiency, reduce the frictional loss. Yeah. So, in order to improve the thermal efficiency, we have changed the uh, uh, cylinder head and uh, increased the compression ratio from 10 to 11. So, that, thereby, that improved the uh, thermal efficiency. The second thing which we did was uh, uh, the friction losses. Though those have been uh, reduced by change of the engine oil. So the engine oil itself has been changed. But the oil itself, or you mean the viscosity? What? The viscosity of the oil has been changed so that we get uh, a lesser uh, friction. So these are the fuel tanks going into the desire. Yeah. Uh, there is a there is a reason we are here, isn't it? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason is that uh, you know uh, when we are talking about fuel efficiency, we are not just talking about the engine. We have to talk about the uh, overall vehicle, yeah. the platform, and a lot of other aspects of it. So one of the aspects is light weighting technology on the platform. How did we achieve that? In the next last generation shift to the new generation, what we did. We've uh, done a light weighting exercise. One of the components of that is the fuel tank, which is changed from the steel tank to a plastic fuel tank. It's quite and, a weight reduction. Yeah, and there's a weight reduction. And uh, of course, there is a little uh, cost up, but yeah, it, it gives us that value uh, you know, to the customer in terms of overall fuel efficiency. Of course, there are certain other things as well that you've done uh, on, on some of the other models. Yeah. So I know you have one of the other cars waiting for us. Definitely. So let's let's car. let's go there. So we've come outside of Plant A, and that implies to you that there is a Plant B, and there's also a Plant C. It's a huge campus here, and uh, the different models are made at different sites. So you've got the sedans in this plant, of course, as you've seen. You've got the Swift hatch that comes out of Plant B, and then you've got the Celerio and the Alto K10 being made in Plant C, right here in Manesar. C for Celerio works for me and uh, it obviously works for Maruti as well. Shall we get in? There's a reason this car is here. We'll tell you why. So it created a flutter at the last Auto Expo and then it pretty much sparked off uh, an almost a revolution in the market ever since. And that's of course this, the uh, auto gear shape. Auto gear, yes. um, that has become such a USP of the Celerio. I know that yeah. the demand caught you off guard as well <laughs> when, when the bookings <laughs> began. Yeah. Um, it, it's a crucial move by the company. Yeah as well. True and uh, I think uh, uh, this came out of our research uh, and uh, we were very keen that in the stop go traffic in the metros we need to offer a comfort and convenience uh, to the customer <laughs> and uh, when we uh, did that research it came out very clearly that one of the reasons why people are shying away from that is because of uh, the fuel efficiency uh, not being good on automatic transmission and the second point of course is the acquisition cost is high. And then our research throw, threw up a number that in case we have no penalty on the fuel efficiency and the, it's an affordable cost of say about 40,000 rupees, uh, that would uh, penetrate and they would get a good penetration on the two parallel technology. And that's when this uh, idea for a AGS technology was muted. We discussed with Suzuki and then Suzuki uh, developed this uh, new technology. Uh, which we call the auto gear shift technology and uh, and in this uh, the Celerio the manual transmission gives 23.1 km per liter the automatic uh, the auto gear shift technology also gives a 23.1 km we get a lot of queries from from viewers as well asking a why haven't you done it with the diesel engine and and b you know when's it going to be available on the swift when's it going to be available on the swift desire yeah. because now yeah. suddenly people want it yeah. and they want it on your other cars as well yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think that's something which we are it's a food for thought for us. We need to uh, look at uh, how we can. Uh, You're being politically uh, correct now. <laughs> <laughs> we have to. Uh, how do we get? Uh, it's assume that you are working on it, but <laughs> but diesel, not diesel. What about uh, that? Yeah, definitely. We that's another thing which we also need to work on. It doesn't uh, restrict you. Right? Uh, you can it go with it doesn't restrict. Uh, but definitely, what we are looking at 
is improving our capacity in wanting to uh, you know we are on the process of localizing improving the capacity uh, of our suppliers so that we can uh, you know uh, actually serve the customer today and that's i think the intent and then stage by stage uh, i'm sure that we will be seeing and we have uh, uh, we're quite uh, uh, you know gung ho about this that this is a technology which is going to take off and we are going to see more numbers and more models in this we hope you enjoyed this little peek into the maruti plant at manesar and also the understanding of how maruti has been able to increase mileage across its cars we're also glad to tell you that this is something most car makers are working on and that means higher fuel efficiency is something you can pretty much expect from most cars these days